Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So this channel, Every Data Science, is all about trying to learn the different concepts in all data science by practicing a lot of questions. In this video, I'm going to solve this question on Strata Scratch regarding marketing campaign success, both using Python as well as MySQL, and try to walk you through how we can develop solutions to such problems. The difficulty level of this question is hard. This question has been asked in Amazon interviews, and it is a great question to solve if you are preparing for data engineer, data scientist, BI analyst, data analyst, ML engineer, or software engineer interviews. Okay, let's jump right in. The question reads, you have a table of in-app purchases by user. Users that make their first in-app purchase are placed in a marketing campaign where they see call to actions for more in-app purchases. Find the number of users that made additional in-app purchases due to the success of the marketing campaign. The marketing campaign does not start until one day after the initial in-app purchases. So users that only made one or multiple purchases on the first day do not count. Okay. Nor do we count users that over time purchase only the products they purchased on the first day. So basically we are given a table called marketing campaign and expected output is basically one number count of all the number of users that made additional in-app purchases due to the success of the marketing campaign. And these are the two conditions that we need to make sure, you know, before counting it. So let's go through this uh, marketing campaign table. Let's see what all it has. So it has basically five different columns. So different users created at product IDs, quantity and prices. So you might have noticed that I'm trying to solve this firstly in MySQL and then in Python because this question is somewhat tricky and it would be very intuitive to understand this in MySQL and you can just re repeat the same thing in Python. I will do the solution in both of them, but it is going to be very intuitive to understand this, uh, you know, the, what the question is asking and how to approach this question uh, in MySQL. Okay, so once we have this, then we need to make sure that okay so for example let's say user id you know uh, let's take for user id 10 right so user id 10 uh, uh, it says that the marketing campaign starts after one day right so okay we have those values that okay uh, the first purchase was on 1st of january 2019 product id 101 and then next day and then after a couple of months okay so it satisfies the first condition that uh, you know that the first uh, first thing is marketing campaign does not start until one day after the initial in-app purchases so users that only made one or multiple purchases on the first day do not count this person did made one or more purchase after the first day so this condition is satisfied secondly uh, if the person is buying the same product right which uh, he or she bought on the first day then also it is go not going to count right so, but here if we can see like here on different days different products were bought so it satisfies both the condition and uh, this should be included right similarly for all else remember one thing like here one very interesting example if i look at user id 25 right so these four rows are for user id 25 now the first thing is does this person satisfy the first condition that the person bought one or more thing after the first day at will. The person bought two things, 114 and 115 product IDs on 22nd of January 2019. But the person also bought one or more things after the first day of in-app purchases, right? So this satisfies condition number one. But what about condition number two? So this person bought uh, on first day 114 and 115 uh, product IDs. But on the even on the next days bought the same thing and this is against the you know uh, the assumption that the question is making that nor do we count users that over time purchase only the products they purchased on the first day right so ideally this user id 25 should not be included in this count right so understand it okay so to do this what we can do is firstly let's make sure you know since there are two different uh, conditions right so first thing we should make sure is that we are only including those users which are buying something more than the first day then only we can you know assume that okay the marketing campaign was a success right because this is the first day right marketing starts on the next day as the question mentions right 
so what we can do is we can you know use the window function try to use ranking right or uh, you know partition by the user id arrange by created at right and perform a ranking so for example user id 10 right so if you rank it so this will get rank 1 rank 2 rank 3 and obviously if the rank is more than 1 that means the person bought something after the first day as well so from this you know table called marketing campaign let's have all the five columns and use a dense rank right and the ranking can be done by various methods rank dense rank row number right but dense rank is more suitable in this case dense rank and since this is a window function we need to write over clause and let's partition by so partition by for each user right now we are see seeing whether the person bought something after the first day of in app purchase or not so partition by user id and then order by right order by created at right order by created at in ascending order and let's alias this as rank one right let me run this let's see what we have okay so now we have for different user ID. So rank one, two, three for this user ID 11, uh, first one, second one. So rank one, two, 12, uh, right? Rank one, two. And there are some of them where there is only one entry, right? For example, if we look at, yeah. So for user ID 19, right? So only one. So rank would be one. So as the, as I discussed from this, like if you do like only keep those rows where rank one is greater than one, that means it is satisfying the first condition that the person is buying something after the first day. Okay. Now, how about the second condition that the person should not only keep buying the things that the person is buying on the first day. To do that, we can again use the dense rank function. But now what we can do is a clever way to do it is now partition by user id and product id arranged by the created at and then rank it right what will that do right let's take this again example of uh, 25 right so what will that do so if i do you know uh, partition by user id comma product id so now this row for user id 25 this row and this row will become one partition right because same user id and same product id and when I arrange by the created ad, so since 22nd of January 2019 comes before 24th of January, so this row will be assigned rank 1, this row will be assigned rank 2, okay? Now for 25 and 115, right, this will be assigned rank 1, this will be assigned rank 2. So once you have that, and since, you know, as we mentioned that we are only keeping those rows where this rank one is greater than one because we need to satisfy the first, first condition, right? So rank one greater than one is basically if you just look at this, right? So for 25, user ID 25, only these two rows are remaining, right? Because these are rank ones. And if you only keep those rows where rank one is greater than one, so these two are going to be excluded. Now, out of these two, if you look at the second way that we ranked, right? So, order uh, partition by user ID and uh, product ID. So, since we partitioned by these and we ordered by this, right? If the person is buying the same thing, so actually, you know, if you if the person is buying the same thing on a different date, then what will be the rank? It will be anything apart from one. It might start to get confusing let me do this like once we have those values then you know let me revisit it so if i write dense rank right dense rank over partition by user id and then product id right product id order by created at in ascending order and let's alias this as rank Okay, let me run this and now let's, you know, look at the user ID 25. Okay, so now you have rank one and rank two. Okay, so you look at for, for example, user ID 10, this person firstly satisfies the first condition that it is buying, uh, this person is buying on different days apart from the first day, right? So if you look at it, uh, rank one, two, three, etc. So that is satisfied. Also, this person is buying different things, right? So different things. So 101 here, 111 here, 119. So if you are buying different things, your rank to the way we are ranking is going to be one because 
user id and product id those that combination will be different across various dates right so that is why your rank is going to be one now let's see the same logic for 25 right so now for 25 uh yeah so for 25 what are the values so one two one two as we discussed now the first thing that we said was you know we are only keeping those rows where rank one is greater than one so obviously these two rows right because this is this is the first day right so these two rows it is excluded now two and three these two are rows are remaining but as i said if you are buying the same thing right if you are buying the same thing on a different date that you bought on the first day your rank will be anything but one right so it won't be one it will be two three and whatnot so you see how you can identify whether this person is buying the same thing on the second day third day or like the next day or over time similarly 140 so here rank two is basically what this person buying the same thing similarly for 115 this person bought 115 on first uh, 22nd of january 2019 but also bought the same thing right so again here the rank will be two right so what can i say if i you know save this in a common table expression right so with cte as and then this entire thing goes into parentheses right this entire thing goes into parentheses and if i write from this common table expression if i keep only those rows where rank one is greater than one so it will satisfy the first condition right the first condition being that uh you know uh, users that only made one or multiple purchases on the first day do not count so we are only making sure that user that are making purchases on the next day or you know after the first day are being counted and also rank two is equal to one which satisfies or which make sure that the person is not buying the same thing the uh, he or she is buying on the first day right so these two conditions will satisfy both of them right and once you have that then right you can simply write select count of distinct user id right so count of distinct uh, user id column right user id and the alias should be uh, count so we can write as count okay let me go ahead and run this let's see what happens so we have okay so the value is 23 which is exactly same as expected output let me go ahead and submit it so this passes all the test cases so yeah, everything is green and this is how we do it now let's try to see how the corresponding code looks like in python okay so same question uh, data frame marketing campaign expected output uh, right uh, and then marketing campaign uh, if we preview this uh, we have all this so again here what we can do is we can do the same thing that you know firstly group by user id arrange by created at in ascending order and then rank right using the method dense do the same thing by grouping by user id and product id to get that right and once we have that then what we can do is we can perform the same uh, you know where clauses that we did in mysql so let's make a column again marketing campaign column called rank one rank one is basically equal to marketing uh, basically equal to marketing campaign right marketing campaign dot group by right marketing campaign dot group by uh, you are grouping by firstly what we did was we partitioned by user id right so user id and then uh, created at so from the column created at you are arranging it and then use the dot rank function so rank method is equal to dense right so method is equal to dense so basically dense ranking just like we did in mysql right uh, okay so once we have this let me just you know see what we have marketing campaign okay so run code and now you can see that okay the first rank right for user ids uh, you have these values so now once you have that then what we can do is we can make another column called rank 2 in in this case what we are doing is marketing campaign right so marketing campaign dot group by group by firstly user id right firstly user id and then by product id 
right then by product id then use the same thing uh, from created at column right so arranging it created at column dot rank and again method is equal to dense right let me again see what we have for this now right so let's see if this column was added or not run this so now you have rank one and rank two and if you look at it the same stuff right so if i go to product or user id 25 you have the same stuff that uh, you know one two one two right okay so now once we have this then what we can do is we can all we should only keep those rows where this rank one is greater than one and rank two is equal to one so marketing campaign marketing campaign right marketing campaign marketing campaign uh column rank one is greater than one right marketing campaign mark greater than one let's store this in a data frame right df and then we also need to make sure that this column is equal to one as well right so now final is equal to df column df rank two is equal to equal to one let me run this let's see what we have so now you are only you know having those users which satisfy both the conditions now we need to basically from this uh you know a column user id just count the unique numbers right so if we can just write final dot column user id and dot unique right so let me run this so you have basically unique uh, user ids and what you need to do is you basically need to count it right so either you can use count or either you can use the length function right it is because this is this what what is the type of this whatever is returned let me just you know firstly te tell you what is the type of this so if i run this what is it? It is a ND array, right? So it's an array. So you can basically go for the length of this array, right? So if I just write length, it will return you the value 23. Okay. Let me go ahead and submit it. So let's pass all the test cases. So yeah, it's all uh, right. So yeah, this is how we do it. Now it might seem, you know, difficult and tricky, but actually you need to be smart about it that the first condition, like it is not very difficult to make sure to satisfy, but the second condition, right? You understand, right? Why we are, you know, partitioning by the combination of user ID and product ID and why, you know, having the rank more than one in that case is making sure that the product was bought on the first day as well. Right. So yeah, this is how we do it. Let me know if there is a better way or a more efficient way you can think of to solve this question. Let the solution be in the comment section below and I will see you guys in the next video.